Okay, so in this video we'll have two examples and they get lengthy here. Uh, these are now pure kinematics of um, rigid bodies in 3D motion. So they're, they're examples of the theory we talked about last time. It's just the kin kin kinematics. We're not describing any forces here. And so the questions will be posed in terms of just motion alone. Okay, so here's a prime example where we have a rotating wheel, you know, rolling on the ground here, that is rotating because there's a shaft that is rotating about the axis O there. Okay, so um, let's first start by defining what the bodies, what the body, the secondary, and the primary are, and we'll we'll move from there, right? Um, what we're looking for, you notice how there's no um, numbers in here, so we're just going to get expressions for the following. We want the angular velocity of the disk, so that's going to be omega a. We want the angular acceleration of the disk, that's alpha a, and then we want the velocity and the acceleration of that point right at the top there. Okay, so note this is a a point. Okay, so let's first, right? So just looking at this, our the thing that is rotating about another thing, right, is the disk. So disk A is the body here. Okay, and then this arm we have here. Now, let's, uh, we're going to have to label some other points. This is the G, the center of mass for the disk. And let's see, A and B are both used. Um, yeah. So, well, B is kind of, well, B is referring to the axle. A is referring to the entire disc. So on that disc, we have points G, P. Another point we're going to use is right down here. Uh, does that go straight down? To, yeah, I guess it's right there. Well, whatever's making contact right now, I think it's right there. Uh, it's a little bit, is it, it looks like it might be off to the left. I don't know. They got their, their picture a little bit off. It has to be right down the center of the axis there. So that's... That's point D because I'm, well, let's label this out here as point C. Okay, so we have to label a few extra points there. Okay, so that'll be point C. Let me see that okay. Okay. All right, so before I get too far, let me get back to where I was. So the arm, this is arm B, is secondary. Okay, so I need to be really careful when I have B, and actually I've already strayed away from my colors because I've used purple for secondary. So let's overwrite this. Arm B is secondary, and that's what we see as S, right? B, the body was the script B. Okay, and then primary. Primary is always really boring. Uh, it's, it's always the base of, of these systems, right? So this is the base uh, O and uh, is primary. Okay, so I think I think we're good. I think we're comfortable here, um, at least with those definitions that the body is the thing that's rotating about another body in these problems. Uh, the arm B is, you know, the secondary one is just the thing that's rotating about the primary, right? And with only like one thing away from it, all right? And the reason we call it this, the reason we have this intermediate is that because this rotation, right, is, is with respect and is always constant, is often constant, with respect to the rotation around this way, right? So you see point P, you know, or think about point G, right? That's just going to be, that's just feeling like it's in the circular motion about here, right? But any point other than G, because G is really a part of the axle as well, any point other than that is not rotating purely about the disk, it's also rotating about C in this complicated fashion. So what this kinematics allows us to do is to describe this complicated uh, relationship. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so let's start by analyzing um, the rotation of A. So this we're getting to those relationships of, and I'm purposely using blue here. So this is the body. Okay, that is the rotation of the body, the angular velocity of the body. That is then written in terms of the relative velocity of the body with respect to the secondary. Now this is just a B, which is what's S in our relationship, right? So, um, and so this is, so this is also B, uh, a script B, and then this is S in our equation that we had last time. All right, and I can plus omega of B. And this is like what's terrible, is that in the first example, B, it's not referring to the body. That's just like my normal 
letter B, and that's just how they label it, axle B, right? Which is secondary here, not the body. So we get to be really careful with that, okay? Now that you got the colors very carefully here, right? We can then say, well, the uh, rotation of A with respect to um, primary is then, well, this is what's unknown, in the J hat direction, right? So with the definition, like uh, with the axis as we have it here, X, Y, and Z, that means that we have I hat that way, J hat is straight down uh, this, the, the axle, so straight up that way, and, uh, and then K hat is straight up, okay? I, J, K hat. So the rotation of the, uh, the disc there is uh, with thumb straight down J hat, right? And so um, we'll just write it like this, okay? That is the relative uh, angular velocity, right? The, regular, the relative motion of the disc with the axle, right? And so even if the axle then swings around this way later on, right, as it, it is rotating there, and it now points over here, the relative motion is still that. Because the 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 um, the coordinate system is going to move with it, because we are going to use that secondary coordinate system, which is the reason we have the secondary in there, right? Okay, uh, and then the act the absolute uh, rotation of B, which is our secondary reference frame, like that absolute rotation. Well, that's that omega naught uh, that's given to us there, right? So plus omega naught, <coughs> excuse me, omega naught k hat. All right, good. So we're going nice and slow here at the start. That because this is the new bit from last time, right? And the, you know the secondary reference frame is showing up here, right? Now we actually can get into something that um, is not new, right? So let's analyze um, from point C out to G here, and that's just that's just circular motion, right? G moves in a circular motion about C, so that's something we've done in the past. So let's analyze C to G. This is the same. These two points are on the same body. They're both on the arm or the axle. Okay. And uh, so we say V, and now G is a point. So again, I'm trying to be careful with my colors, at least at the setup here. Uh, this equals the velocity of C, which is a point. So that's red as I've done it, plus the rotation of B. And I've already gone away from my color there. Rotation of B, B is secondary, so that should be purple. All right, that's the secondary reference frame. Cross, and that's because that is the rotation of the rigid body that connects C and G, right? So the rotation of the CG connection is the B arm, right, which is a secondary reference frame. Crossed into the relative position vector of G to, uh, C to G. Okay. Anything, you know, anything we can say more about here? Well, of course, this is just zero, right? That point C is not moving. I got it right on the axis of rotation there. So, you know, even absolute velocity is zero. This is a fixed position with respect to primary and with respect to our, our coordinate system, right? Okay. And then, uh, so then we're going to plug these in, right? So this is now that omega naught. We already had that up there. Omega naught k hat crossed into now the relative position to go from C to G, right? Is 2R in the J hat direction given in the problem statement there. 2R J hat. And so k hat crossed into J. K hat crossed into J is a negative I hat. We get that VG is negative 2R omega naught I hat. Okay, that's helpful not the final answer not really close to the final answer right oh and by the way this is all uh, well you yeah, know this is this is valid right this is this is good I thought I had something more to say but um, nope I think it's sufficient okay now let's do the same thing what we want to get is another expression for V of G in terms of another point that we know a lot of information about right we, we chose to do this because this point is fixed right that gives us a lot of information any other point that's fixed currently has a no velocity absolute to the primary right is that point down there D 
That's the other point that's not moving currently with respect to the primary reference frame. I think every other point is moving, has some sort of motion, okay? Okay, um, and the reason it's not moving is because it's, it's, it's a rolling with no slip, right? So now let's do the same analysis starting from D as we've defined it to G. These are on the same body, but a different body. They're both on the disc that's rotating. Okay, so then what we uh, can write this as the velocity of G equals the velocity of D plus not omega B, but instead we've got omega A. That's our body, so that goes in blue as the colors I've used. Uh, crossed into the position vector, the relative position vector of uh, D to G. So G from D, okay? And now, uh, what are we looking for? We're looking for the angular velocity of the disk. So in order to get that, we need this relative velocity, a, a uh, relative angular velocity of A with respect to B, okay? That's gonna show up here because that is this rotation. Well, I mean, sorry, we're just gonna plug this in here, right? Oh, and I forgot to cancel this out, right? I was gonna say we... Okay, this is zero, we already talked about it. This is the no slip friction, no slip rolling. So D is not moving, it has no velocity with respect to primary. All right. <clears throat> Okay, but this we just plug in. So now this is omega A from B, J hat plus omega naught K hat. All right, and that's why we did the work up here. And that we cross into the relative position of G from D. Go back to our diagram. That's in the K hat direction, which is straight up. And that's just a radius away, right? That's the radius of the disc. So this is R K hat. And if we look there, we got a k hat cross a k hat, that's zero. Any vector crossed into itself is zero. But then we have j hat crossed into k hat. j hat crossed into k hat is in the positive i hat direction. So we have that our vg, put my little vector up there, vg also is r omega a b i hat. Okay, that's a very good result, very good because this asterisk one up there, and now we have two, and we combine these as the double asterisk here. Um, these are both equal to each other, right? This is the VG on the disc, this is VG on the arm. Well, that's the same point, right? They're, they're connected, that point is the same, right? So the next step is to combine these two. We set single asterisk equal to double asterisk, and we get that minus two r omega naught equals r omega a from b, which tells us that the relative motion of a, the disc, from the perspective of somebody sitting on, you know, the moving, the secondary reference frame, which is the arm, is minus two omega naught. Okay, not the final answer, but we're now very close to a, well, we can now answer a. All right, in terms of the givens, all right, which givens means it's anything in the diagram, essentially. Omega naught is in there, R is in there, and that's pretty much it. We should we need to be able to write everything in terms of R's and omega naughts. We got it now, right? So the the rotation of the disk, we were just waiting to solve for that. We just did that. Okay? So part A, which actually is well the easiest of any of the parts. Uh, B is gonna come pretty quick too, but C we got some work still to do. Okay, A, angular velocity of the disk, that is omega A is omega naught K hat. That we knew right away, All right? But now omega AB, we're plugging it in, is minus two omega naught J hat. And that's it. Okay. Now, uh, part B is asking for the angular acceleration of the disk. That's alpha, the absolute angular acceleration, right? This is, uh, so uh, that's what we're looking for. Absolute angular acceleration in terms of with respect to primary. That's what we just determined here for angular velocity with respect to primary. 
Okay, so here we go to the um, the equation we have for right angular acceleration. Right, this is what we need to solve for. Okay, our relationship is that well that this equals the angular acceleration of the secondary. So that's in purple. Uh, B plus the angular acceleration of the body, which is A, from the secondaries, that's B's perspective, so relative, and then we have that cross product of the angular velocities. Angular velocity of the arm, so secondary, crossed into the angular velocity of the body with respect to secondary, which is B. Okay, and then these are both vectors. All right. Anything we can cross out here? Well, yeah. These are all constant, right? Omega naught is given as a constant in the problem statement. So that's a omega naught is the rotation of B of our arm, right? Omega naught is that, and that's given as a constant, so it has no acceleration. And then we determine that the rotation of A with respect to B is only depends on omega naught there, which is a constant. So this is also zero. Omega A from B equals minus two omega naught is also constant. Okay. Then it's only this term. So the acceleration of the disk is then omega naught k hat crossed into, that's omega b, uh, crossed into minus two omega naught j hat, which we just found. k cross i is k cross, I'm sorry, k cross j is in the negative i hat direction. So this is uh, two, positive two omega naught i hat. Okay, and that's the final answer, right? That's the answer is part b. The angular acceleration absolute with respect to primary of the disk is minus two omega naught squared I hat. All right. So look back at the problem statement. We got A and B done. Now the last step is to determine the velocity and acceleration of point B, P on the disk, which is sitting up there at to up top. Okay. All right. So let's see. How can we get to information about velocity and acceleration there? Well, we already did the velocity from D to G. Why not use that information to keep propagating upward up to P? That seems a lot of sense, right? We already determined that v the velocity at G, right? we actually have two relationships for it, right? <laughs> should both be valid because we set them equal to each other to determine this part here. So we should be able to use what VG is to go all the way up to P because those are on and, and that's because they're on the same rigid body and we have nice rigid body relationships. Okay, so let's do that. So part C, uh, G up to P. So uh, these are the same body, uh, the disc. And first let's do the velocity analysis. So we'll also do acceleration to follow. So this says that our velocity of point P, points are red, equals the velocity of point G, those are points on the rigid body, plus the angular acceleration of the body or whatever's connecting them. So in this case, that's body A crossed into the relative position vector uh, of P from G. Okay. Now we know all of these, right? That's what I said. We already determined. Well, VG is minus 2 R omega naught I hat. That was one of the relationships we had for it. Okay. Plus omega A. We determined that. I mean, that was the answer to part A. Pulling this back, right? That was the answer to part A. So we'll just plug that in here. Omega naught. This is where we're just letting the math flow, right? Follow. Be methodical. Do your cross products, right? And then the, pos the relative posi position vector of R from G, that's just go up a radius in the k-hat direction. So R k-hat. All right. Now let's check this bit right here, because this is already done. 
Uh, K hat crossed into K hat is zero. J hat crossed into K hat. I just do it really quick. That's a positive I hat. And so you still get the negative holding true. Minus two omega naught R uh, I hat. And so you got minus two R omega naught I hat, minus two R omega naught I hat. You get a total of four. So our velocity at P is minus four R omega naught I hat. That's a final answer. We only got one left to go, which is the acceleration. And we'll just keep, we'll just, we, we have acceleration relationships for points on the same rigid body. So let's do that, right? So we'll stay in this realm of G to P and do the acceler acceleration analysis. See how close we get, right? Acceleration of point P, that's red. Acceleration of point P equals the acceleration of point G plus, oh, we're, look, we already know we're in trouble. I don't think we have the acceleration of G yet, right? It's a quantity we don't have. Well, let's, let's write out the rest of the relationship and see if we have the rest of it. Acceleration of A, well, yeah, this was the answer to part B in our problem, so we have that. This is then crossed into a position vector, and we can always get position vectors with this problem, so P to G, in fact, we use that up here. And then um, we have a cross product of the, R, uh, the body's uh, angular velocity, that's crossed into um, the result and cross pro the cross product itself over here of omega a and r p from g. All right, and th 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 this is the answer to a. That was the answer to b. Those that we know. So the only thing we're missing is right here. We need this first. Need to find this first. And how can we do that? Well, if we go back, what have we done here, right? Looking back really early on in the problem, we started our analysis from C to G to get the velocity at G, right? Well, we could have just, at that point, extended this to getting the acceleration of G from point C, and that's because C is an important point, right? It uh, has no acceleration. So let's do that now. Let's go back to C to G uh, and do acceleration. Okay, acceleration of point G, that's a point, equals the acceleration of point C that we know to be zero. We'll cross that out in a second. And uh, we're going to kind of follow the format we have up there, but be careful with what rigid body. Remember, these are on the rigid body, which is the secondary reference frame, or uh, that's called uh, arm B. Okay. So that's where these differ. Right? This is a secondary reference frame rotating. Uh, that's the rigid body of interest here. Crossed into the position vector of G from C. Plus, and this will be an omega crossed into an omega crossed into a position vector where the position vector is G from C. The omega is B for both of them. That's the arm B. Okay. Now... This, as we've talked about, is zero. Get out of here. Um, that is zero, right? Because that's a fixed point. This is also zero, as uh, we did back in part B, right? Because omega naught, I'll just remind you, right? Because omega naught is constant, so we're just canceling that out for the same reason. And all we're left with is this term over here, which looks, you know, can get a little bit ugly. So this is now. It's not too bad here. This is omega naught k hat crossed into omega naught k hat crossed into uh, R G C, which is just two R J hat. And we've already used that one back when we did C to G before. Okay, this term here k cross j is minus i hat. So this is minus two R omega naught i hat. And now we're going to cross k hat into i hat. k hat into i, I hat is j hat, positive j hat. Okay, so the acceleration of g is just minus 2r omega naught squared j hat. And now we can plug that into here and we have everything else. So let's do that. So 
the acceleration of P and I'm done using here you can see I only do it in the original setup just to you know orient ourselves with that with the colors now we're done with it right okay so let's see AP the acceleration of point P is this AG which is minus 2 R omega naught squared J hat plus uh, the alpha A going back to part B we got 2 omega naught squared I hat and then we cross that into the position vector of P to, uh, G to P, or P from G, which is R K hat. Okay, maybe put some parentheses there to make that obvious. And then we got this term over here. Okay, this one's going to be a doozy here, because this is, from part A has two components, the omega of A here. So this is plus, and um, are we going to be able to fit it in? I think maybe. So 2 omega naught J hat plus omega naught k hat is what we got from part A. This is then crossed into that same exact term, minus 2 omega naught j hat plus omega naught k hat, and then that is crossed into uh, that r k hat, crossed into r k hat. Okay, we did fit it, which is always an achievement, makes a small accomplishment there. Okay. K hat, we always do inner parentheses first. K hat crossed into K hat has no contribution, but the J hat crossed into K hat. J hat crossed into K is positive I hat. So this is minus 2R omega naught I hat. Right, the negative stays. Uh, by the way, whenever I'm doing that, I'm actually, <laughs> you don't see it, right? I'm actually doing this really quick. I'm referring back to my diagram here, which is right there, and saying, what do we do there? K, J crossed into K, so I'm doing J crossed into K, and my thumb points an I hat, and right, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing that every single time. Um, I'm not just, just saying it out loud. Okay, so then this whole term, right, is going to be, uh, so if this is an I hat, okay, they're going to have two terms here, right? Because we have a J crossed into K, uh, I'm sorry, J crossed into I, which is minus K hat. So, okay, ooh, a lot of negatives there. So this is negative, negative, so that's a positive 4 R omega naught squared, but then J hat crossed into I hat is minus K hat. And then this one is K hat crossed into I hat, which is positive j hat, but there's a negative there. So minus 2 r omega naught j hat. Oh, and an omega naught squared. Alrighty. This term here, i hat crossed into j, is a minus j hat. So this is minus 2 r omega naught squared j hat. And then you got a minus 2 r omega naught squared j hat. So, final answer. After all this work for the acceleration is you got two j hats there, you got two j hats there, you got two j hats there, minus six r omega naught squared j hat, minus four r omega naught squared k hat. All right. All right, it's a good one. All right, I got another one here to follow up. Okay, so in this second example, and the last one, because these take a while to get through here, uh, we got something that looks remarkably complicated. Um, but uh, again, let's follow our procedure uh, really carefully. Um, uh, carefully color code my you know different reference frames. That's how I like to get through these ones. And uh, we should be able to work our way to, to get to an answer here. So... Um, now this problem, I forgot to have this ready to go. This problem in as I printed it is not uh, well posed. So we actually have to impose that this is rotating at a three, four, five, or the orientation of that uh, O to A line is on a three, four, five triangle. And that, uh, um, what that is associated with is a uh, 36.9 degree angle here, where can I fit it in? Okay, this angle is 36.9 degrees, uh, which is also that angle there on a three, four, five triangle. Right? You can determine this. Right? Do the um, do the uh, inverse cosine of four fifths. You get 36.9 degrees. Okay.
36.9 degrees. Okay, so now we've got the problem posed. Um, let's see, what do we have? We've got a bar PQ that's spinning, well, it's spinning this way, okay? Spinning about the axis OA, but um, A itself, uh, I guess this, this, the, um, well, the OA kind of bent bar here itself is also rotating about uh, the O axis, right? The Z axis as it's defined there. Okay. And uh, their rotation rates are given there, omega 1 and omega 2. So let's define our different reference frames first. We'll first say what our body is. Well, the body is going to be this PQ bar, and it has an omega. So omega PQ, whenever we see it in our analysis, we just put omega 1, which is 20 radian per second. Okay, secondary reference frame, and that's where we're going to fix our coordinate system, uh, which is actually off kilter from what we have here. Secondary is going to be the OA um, uh, bar, rigid body, which is omega OA is given by omega 2, which is 12 radian per second. Now, be careful here because omega 2 is actually, uh, is actually negative. All right, do you see that? So um, omega two, let's put that down here. Um, yeah, let's, omega two is actually th about that axis, and uh, omega one is about this axis, right? Which is well positive based on how we're going to define it, right? Okay, and that's, and it's hard to see the three-dimensional, right? But that should be like straight down, right? Like straight against the z-axis. Now, um, the coordinate system we're going to choose, right? Is actually, um, it should be aligned with, um, you know, the, the OA alignment right now, right? So I'm going to write it, if we extend this down a little bit, here is going to be like um, where I'm going to write my unit vectors. So k-hat is definitely aligned in the z direction. But, uh, you know, the choice we have for the j-hat maybe there and i hat is going to be there you see how it's a little bit tilted it's just because of the current alignment uh and is maybe right it's like right now this bar is not straight over y based on where this is where this is oriented okay okay and maybe for completeness let's also put what the primary is which is just the base here base o obviously not moving okay okay so let's work through some geometry here first we need to get all these lengths that are going to be important, right? So I'm going to take um, I'm going to take a view um, along the i hat direction here. It's actually i hat is coming out at us. So what we're looking at in this picture is j hat to the to the right, k hat going up, and then i hat would be coming right out at us. And uh, right, so we have point P, which is right there, up at the top. Okay, going down to O, and then A is out here somewhere. Okay, and you know, whether there's some kinks in the OA bar, right, and then the fact that we're leaving off Q doesn't much matter, right? We're just trying to get the, uh, the geometry down here. Now we're given here that this is 1.8, and we're given that this is 2.4, and then I've also specified that there, this is... 36.9 36.9 degrees now um, let's see here this triangle well and what we'd want to do is kind of determine all of these lengths okay this triangle here another way to, to see this right I mean that that should, you know, through the 36.9 degree angle, we should be able to determine all the lengths and knowing what the hypotenuse is of that triangle is. So we can definitely work our way through that. In fact, let's just do it for one of these lengths, right? So this, this one up here is going to be 1.44. And why is it 1.44? Well, that is 2.4 times the sine of 36.9 degrees. Th sine because it's the opposite that we're asking for. Okay. Now... Uh, right, and that should give you 1.44. Okay, you can draw this a little bit bigger, 
because we need to refer to this diagram as we go along here. Now, the reason I put this triangle here in purple is because that triangle is similar to the 345 oriented 3, 4, 5. Okay, and that's just because the 36.9 is down here. Okay, so we can use that to, to scale up, you know, any of these triangles just through proportions, right? That's going to be like a little, you know, trick here. And what, th what this means, right, cosine of 36.9, in fact, it gives us more precise measurements. That is 4 fifths. Sine of 36.9 degrees is 3 fifths. All right, and so instead of doing sines and cosines, we can use these ratios. So let's see, how do we get this leg over here? Well, this leg over here is going to be 4 fifths of 2.4, right? And that's because this ratio is 4 to 5, as this is going to be what we're looking for to 2.4. So we multiply this by 2.4, 2.4 by 4 fifths, and we get 1.92. And you do this, um, you can actually do uh, the same thing up here. Uh, well, actually here, now that we know these two lengths, I guess you could have done it, uh, this is what I meant to say, we could have done it here, right? So uh, 1.44 is also equal to 3 fifths of 2.4 okay we're also going to do this for these the other um, you know triangles that are in the in the in the picture this 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 leg here um, let's do it in a different color this one we can solve for different like that's just a right triangle so we can just do 1.8 squared minus 1.44 squared square root that and we get 1.08 for that length okay so we got 1.08, 1.92, 2.4, 1.8, 1.44. Those are all going to be important lengths. And I think um, we're ready to move on now. Okay, so we'll work through some geometry here first, maybe step zero. Now let's get into step A, right, which is find the velocity uh, of, of the end P here at this current time in the current configuration, and then we'll find the acceleration here for, point, for part B. Okay, so part A, all right, First thing we need to do is relate, all right, we have those two, those two aspects of this problem, right? Relate the rotational motions of the body to the secondary, and then, uh, you know, our, uh, on a same rigid body, can we relate velocities? Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll relate the omega of our uh, body, and I'm gonna be less careful with the colors now. I think we've got some practice, but maybe I will label it here just at the beginning, right? This is the body, that's what I put in blue, that equals, the rotation of the secondary, okay, plus the relative rotation of the body with respect to the secondary. Okay, so that's going to equal, so omega PQ is then going to be, um, well, this omega OA, and this is why we had to be so careful with the direction here, this is actually minus omega 2 k hat, right? That is the angular rotation um, of the secondary reference frame, which is the OA element. That's rotating um, about negative k hat, right? Uh, with, a, with a magnitude of minus, with a magnitude of omega 2, and which is 12 radians per second, so we know that number, plus, um, let's see, this is now going to be, oh, that, that's, okay, this we have to be, with this we have to do a little bit of work with, right? So this is the, this is that rotation, but we want to write it in, in these coordinates, okay? So let's take that vector there and, uh, write another little diagram for its components. Okay, so this is omega 1, the vector, and you can see, right, because it points normal, yeah, that um, we can use that, you know, it's right in line with the 36.9 uh, 36 degree angle. In fact, on this picture, that 36.9 is hiding right there, 36.9 degrees. So this is similar to a 5, 4, 3 triangle, where the tighter angle is up at the top, right? 
Okay, so all, instead of doing the sine and the cosine of this, right, the x component or the i hat component here is three-fifths of omega-1. Three-fifths of omega-1 just from proportions. That's in the, well, it's actually, I'm sorry, not in the i hat direction. That's in the j hat direction, right? i hat is kind of coming out as, in fact, there's going to be no components in the i hat direction. It's only going to be the j and the k directions. Okay, so this is three-fifths omega-1 in the j hat direction plus four-fifths omega-1 in the k-hat direction. And we're just adding those on, okay? So uh, let's plug in some numbers here. Uh, omega-1 is 20. Omega-1 is 20. Omega-2 is 12. So we'll have a negative 12 in the k-hat, and then four-fifths of... Uh, four-fifths of 20 is 16, so 16 minus 12. We will get... Uh, so let's write it over here. Omega PQ is 4 in the k-hat direction, and then 3 fifths of 20 is 12. Yep, yeah, so 4, yeah, okay, 12. So 12 j-hat plus 4 k-hat. All right. And it's really hard to be careful with the units on something that's this complicated, so we will assume our units are right and know that these units here are, you know, radians per second. Okay, so moving on now, what we're looking for is the velocity of this point P. In order to do that, we need to get this absolute rotation of PQ, right? And the next step is we've got to work our way from the fixed point up to A to get its velocity, and then get the velocity of P once we get A. That's the general procedure here. So first start, go O to A. Okay, and this says our velocity at A equals the velocity at O plus the rotation of the OA rigid body, that's like the, the secondary reference frame, and then the relative position of O uh, from, or the relative position of A from O. Okay, this is zero because this is our fixed, I mean, it's the definition of primary, so it's fixed to the primary reference frame. Okay, and then, uh, right, this remember, one more reminder at least here. Uh, that's our secondary reference frame. Uh, that is the rotation of the OA element, okay? So this is now just minus omega 2 k hat, right there, crossed into the position vector to get uh, from A to, from O, all right? So this is gonna be 1.44 over in the j hat direction and 1.92 up in the k hat direction. 1.44 j hat plus 1.92 k hat. All right. Now look at the cross product here, right? K crossed into K is nothing. The only contribution we get is K crossing in to J hat. And K crossing into J hat is minus I hat. So that's going to cancel with that I hat. We get the velocity at A is 1.44 uh, omega 2 I hat positive. And uh, can we put a number in there? Omega 2 is 12. So what's 1.44 times 12? Might as well put in a number in. Um, I actually don't have that prepared, so I'm going to do it really quick. 1.44 times 12, 17.28. Okay. Another useful quantity. Not the final answer, okay? Final answer comes when we now extend this A to P because those are on the same rigid body, all right? So same body OA, same body uh, PQ. All right, so very similar equation though, the velocity at P is the velocity at A plus the rotation of the PQ element that both points are on, crossed into that relative position vector, P from A. Okay, this is no longer zero. This instead is 17.28 I hat plus, okay, omega of PQ, we got to be 12 J hat 4 K hat. 12 J hat plus 4 K hat crossed into the relative position of P from A. Okay, so that one we need to go to our diagram. We need to go backwards the 1.44 in the j hat direction and upward 1.08 in the k hat direction. 
Okay, so this is going to be crossed with minus 1.44 j hat plus 1.08 k hat. All right. And, uh, okay, let's see. So then this is i hat. Okay, we got a cross product of a, a j and each of the j and a k elements. So let's take that one by one. Okay, the j hat crossed into j hat is nothing, right? Any any time we're crossing the same vector into itself, you get no contribution. J cross into k is uh, j cross into k is the positive i direction, so it's going to be twelve times one point zero eight. Twelve times one point zero eight uh, in the i hat direction, positive. And then k crossed into j, that's k crossed into j is so the negative i hat, but we got a negative there. So this is plus 4 times 1.44, also in the i hat direction. And then k crossed into k is nothing. I do have an answer here, but I'm going to check. Okay, so we got 12 times 1.08 plus 4 times 1.44, add 17.28, and we get exactly 36. So our velocity of point P is 36 i hat, and this will be meters per second because of the units involved. And now it's time for a common sense check. Let's go back here, right? Does that make sense? It's only in the i hat direction, right? That point, right, where is its current velocity? Well, we've set, we have affixed the reference frame, right? There's the, the j hat direction, k, uh, k hat, um, is straight up, well that point isn't moving in any of those directions. How, how could it be moving down the rod? Can't be. How could it be moving upward? Nope. It's kind of coming straight out at us, which is the i-hat direction. So that makes a lot of sense. And it's rotating that way, so it should be positive as i-hat is kind of outward, right? It's not really out at us. It's kind of like that direction. How do we do it? Like that direction maybe? I don't know. Three dimension projected to two dimensional sheet doesn't really always work. Okay, we'll keep this sheet handy because we're not done. We're only halfway done. In fact, the acceleration is always a little bit more work, so we're less than halfway done. But, um, yeah, I know we'll, we'll need to be referencing our, our work to this point. Okay, part B, getting the acceleration at point, at point uh, P. Now, I mean, we did geometry. That's gonna was needed for everything. It was really vital. But this whole idea of like relating the uh, angular motions from the two rotating bodies, we're going to do the same thing for acceleration first, then doing O to A but with acceleration instead of velocity, that'll be the next step, and then doing A to P with accelerations instead of velocities will be the last step. And that's it, right? They get a little bit more complicated with accelerations, you get a few extra terms, but that general procedure is exactly what we're going to follow, but for um, accelerations instead of velocities. Okay, so the first thing we do is relate the angular acceleration of the PQ rod to the angular acceleration of the OA element and the angular acceleration relative of PQ with respect to OA. So this is, well, maybe in a second I'll come and write these as body versus secondary. Okay, we have body body, a body, secondary, oops, secondary, 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 okay? Now these are, this is zero, and uh, this is also zero. The reason they're zero is because, well, this one, because omega-2 is given as a constant, and omega-1 is given as a constant. That's exactly what these are. These are the time derivatives of those, uh, those omegas, right? The, the um, rotations of those different rigid bodies. So both of those are zero. This over here is not zero, but we have the information to calculate that. So the absolute acceleration of the PQ bar, uh, omega OA is minus omega 2 K hat. Cross that into uh, omega PQ from OA, uh, which we already determined. Where is that? I'm trying to find it, which is right here. 3 fifths, so that was 20 J hat. No, no, sorry. 
20 times so that was 12 j hat plus 16 k hat okay 12 j hat plus 16 k hat and when we go to cross it right and then now remember the uh, no mega 2 is 12 okay but the k hat cross k hat will have no contribution here it'll only be the k hat crossed into j hat k hat crossed into j hat is a negative i hat but we got a negative out front there so this is a positive 12 times 12 i hat or 144 i hat so alpha pq is 144 i hat Useful, we'll be using this later, so let's box it. But not a final answer, so not a rigid box. Okay, now let's analyze point O to A with acceleration. Those are on the same rigid body, so we're able to do this. The acceleration of A is the acceleration of O. There's primary and secondary, um, well, a point on the secondary. Uh, we don't, okay, these are points, right? This is the, the secondary rotation crossed into the relative position of A with respect to O plus uh, angular velocity of the secondary reference frame crossed into itself crossed into the relative position vector. Okay, again, um, well, our primary, yeah, that's zero, that's just a fixed point at the base of our system there. Uh, this is zero, again, because omega-2 is constant. And, uh, and well, that's it, right? So those first two terms are zero. We just have that last term, which isn't too bad, right? So our, ang our, our absolute acceleration of point A, right? We're analyzing this point right there. Absolute acceleration of point A is, uh, this is minus omega-2 k hat crossed into minus omega 2 k hat, crossed into the relative position of AOA, and we already determined that in part A of the problem, 1.44 j hat plus 1.92 k hat, okay? This here, this turns out to be, let's see, k hat crossed into k hat is nothing, so k crossed into j is minus i hat, so the negatives cancel. We get positive 1.44 omega 2 i hat, and then we've got a uh, uh, k crossing i hat is positive j hat, but a negative there. So this is then negative 1.44 omega 2 squared j hat. Now, well, let's calculate that too. Uh, da, 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 da. 1.4, I'll tell you in my original solution, I was uh, waited till the end to plug in numbers and it gets a little bit ugly. So let's just plug them in when we get them. 207, because this is 12, right? Omega two is 12, yep. So 1.44 times 12 squared is 207. So the acceleration of point A is 207.36, that'll be meter per second squared, uh, j hat, oh, and there's a negative, and the negative is important. Okay, what does that mean, right? This means that this, this negative, right, let's go back to our diagram. This means that point A, as this body is rotating around it, and then P, Q is, is rotating about it, A is then um, currently accelerating inward towards the vertical axis, right? Well, that's what happens for a body that's in uh, circular motion. In fact, this is the centripetal uh, centripetal acceleration, all right? Because that body is just rotating about that z-axis. All right, so this is inward toward the z-axis. So what we have here is centripetal, so uh, acceleration, centripetal, centroid, center word, center word acceleration, right, towards the center. Okay, last step of the problem, um, go from A to P now. Okay, so the acceleration uh, of P can be written as the acceleration of A plus the angular acceleration of now the, the rigid body we're on, PQ, 
crossed into the relative position vector of p from a plus omega pq, that's the rotation rate of that element, crossed into omega pq, crossed into r p a. Okay, so you might, like, this is like, what I was tended to like, okay, we'll cancel this out, we'll look to cancel something out. Actually, nothing cancels out here. Remember, this is the absolute acceleration of pq. So just because omega 1 is constant, right, the fact that there's a omega 2 here means that there is a rotation for this body from the pi primary's perspective, right, from the primary reference frame. Even though omega 1 is constant, the combination and the orientation means that alpha pq absolute is not zero. In fact, we, we calculated it already up here, right? That's that 144i hat. Okay, so there's an angular acceleration about the i hat direction, right, that's associated with the element pq even though omega 1 and omega 2 independently are constant. Okay, so let's see, can we plug all these in and just get to an answer? A, P, uh, this is now acceleration of A is minus 207.36 J hat. Alpha, alpha PQ is 144 I hat. Crossed into R, P, A. Have we already determined that? R, P, A is right down here, minus 144 J hat. Minus 1.44 J hat plus 1.08 k hat okay next one uh okay this is a little bit ugly omega pq we determined right away which was 12 j hat plus 4 k hat so you think we can fit it in there 12 j hat plus 4 k hat oh definitely crossed into 12 j hat plus 4 k hat crossed into r p a oh we already have that that's right we already did that one which is right there minus 1.44 j hat plus 1.08 k hat all right all right we're getting really close right now we just got to work this all out okay this term doesn't change minus 207.36 j hat i hat crossed into j hat and k hat, so nothing cancels there, right? So a, a into j is just gonna be k hat. So that's 144, 144 times minus 1.44 k hat, okay? And then i crossed into k hat is minus j hat, so that'll be negative. Minus 144 times 1.08 j hat. I got the negative out front. Um, we got to do this term in here. This will just produce two terms in there because we got a j hat crossed into j hat, which does nothing, but then we have a j hat crossed into k hat. j into k is a positive i hat, so it's going to be 12 times 1.08 i hat. Okay, and then the k crossed into j is a negative i hat, but there's a negative there, so another positive 1.44 times 4 i hat. Okay, so all told, let me do a quick calculation. 12 times 1.08 plus 1.44 times 4, 18.72. This equals 18.72 i hat. And then we cross that with j hat k hat, right? So j crossed into i is negative k hat. Okay, so I'm going to add this component down here, plus 12 times 18.72 j crossed into i, what did I say, that was negative k hat, j crossed into i, k hat, so that's a negative out front, and, uh, and then we got k hat crossed into i hat, that should be positive j hat, plus 4, 18.72 j hat. Okay, and this is now it, and these are all in there, so we just got to do a final calculation here. AP is then going to be all the J hats combined, negative 20736, uh, 144 times 1.08 is 155.52. Oh gosh, I hope there's no mistakes. 4 times 18.72 is... 
74.88 J hat. Okay, and then the K hats here are going to be 144 times 1.44. A lot of 12s in that, huh? Um, which is 200 and, oh, there it is again, 207.36. That one is negative. And we got another negative contribution. Negative, so 12 times 18.72, which is 224.64. K hat. Okay, let's see if uh, these are the same numbers I got when I ran this the first time, uh, where I kept variables until the end, which produced ugly algebra. Um, 224. I'm doing the K hat here first. You got 432. Yep, that's what I got. So minus 432 K hat. And the J hats are going to be negative 207.36 uh was one of these negative this one here was negative i knew something was wrong 207 minus 155.52 and then plus 74.88 288 that's exactly what i got before minus 288 j hat ap equals this, and the units here are meter per second squared. All right, I'm happy. Okay, that's it. Now this, right, uh, intuition, right? There's a J-hat component and a K-hat component to the acceleration of P. Accelerations are, right, sometimes, you know, if you just get one component, we can reason how it is. But that means there's an acceleration of point P uh, negative, so it would be kind of that way, while at the same time it's kind of going uh, no, downward, right? And that makes sense, the downward one. So as, as this object rotates around and the bar rotates this way, it kind of makes sense that it's, it's accelerating downward, right, in the negative k hat direction, and also in the negative j hat direction as it, it starts to it propagate that way, right? The whole system like, rotates that way. Okay, so that's it. So the next step then is now we'll jump into kinetics, the true full dynamics of... Um, these three-dimensional uh, motions and um, that wraps up the content for the semester but I think we got about three lectures left to talk about the kinetics of the 3D systems.